Okay, so what I'm doing now is here a dead fall trap here using a figure four method. So all I've got is three sticks here and I've shaved a little indent out of it and I've shaped it into a figure four, hence the name figure four. Here, put a little spike on the end where I'll put my bait. And like I said, I'm going to use some dead fall, so do you want to lift this up for me? Now this is a bit fiddly, so I'll turn around this one. Right, so this way I'll put on a run, stuff this area on animal run. I've got two stakes in the ground because I want my dead fall falling straight down. The animal comes along, starts gnawing on the bit of wood, then gets squashed and that is it. That's dead fall, thank you very much. So it gives me that string back. As I've got here is a trigger, so all I've got is a bit of wood on the end, and I've put a snare on the other end like so. What I'm going to do now is I've put two stakes in the ground, here like so. I'm going to get one wood, but with the stakes make sure they've got hooks on it. One more comes around like that. The string goes from behind it to the front. Then I'm going to put the other bit in place. Now as you can see here, I've got a bit of a platform. Put my snare on the platform. So what I'll do, this will be on a run. Bit of bait on here. Animal comes along, steps on my platform, and what it's going to shoot off like so. It'll be wrapped up in its snare, hung up there. The reason why I'll do these types of traps is because I don't want any other animals eating me rabbits. So if there's foxes in the area, I'll make a spring trap. That's it for me, thank you very much. Right, so obviously the first priority in survival is protection. So that's protection to yourself. So say you've had a car crash, you want to start sorting yourself out first. Say you've crashed in the desert or you've come down in a helicopter. You never know. You've come down in a plane, going on holiday. And you ends up here, you ends up on an island. Your first day of priority is obviously protection, but that's to yourself first, doing first aid, sorting yourself out. From there, you're going to start looking into shelters. The reason why shelter comes before food and water, because a lot of people are more likely to die in a survival situation, whether, whether it be due to the heat, in the extreme heat conditions. So you need to get out in, in the shade, get out the sun, or if you're in the Arctic, you need to get in, in a shelter as well to get warm. The shelter we've made here, this is known as a lean to. One to take from this is the main beam leans on the insides of the trees and all you do then is build all the way down it and then we weave get loads of layers, lab, lab branches and just weave all the way into it what we do then is do a heat deflector nice little fire deflects the heat back into the shelter what else i'll have in there as well is a bed i'd make a bed in there whether i be from thatching it so using all the roofing i could do exactly the same on the bed and raise myself off the ground so that's known as our lean to i'll show you the next one So what made here is a wigwam. So exactly the same concept. Uh, got three, three big logs at first, tied them all together, stubbed them all up, and we just built all the way around it. And all we've done is weave exactly the same concept as I lean to. And what I'll do, I'll have a fire in the middle, as you can see in the middle now. Come on, have a look. Get a fire going in here, and uh, get a couple of people sitting around so it's nice and cosy in here. Keeps the heat in, nice and quick to knock up. Next one we've got here is known as a jungle bed. So the reason why we have a jungle bed is just the raises off the ground. So if I, if I come down in the tropics, I don't want to be lying in the ground and there's loads of insects, snakes, so on and so forth. So as you can see here, I've raised myself up off the ground, made my bed, and I'll get snuggled right in there. I've got a decent roof underneath, and obviously underneath it, that's where all my firewood's going to go as well. And here, that's it, last one. And if I was on my own, I'd make an A-frame, as you can see here, it's a shape of an A. I'd thatch it all, load the bedding in there, and I'd, I'd probably use this for myself. But like I said, that's our first priority, protection, and that's a few uh, shelters we use in Southwest Survival. Thank you very much for watching my YouTube channel. Please subscribe and see more videos. Cheers. What I'm going to do now is just go through a few ways uh, of how you can get water and purify water. So what we've made here is something called a solar still. And all you're doing is digging a hole, I'm going to put a bucket in there, so or, or a couple of containers, something to collect water. Then I'm going to put a bag over it, and the, the main thing about this is you want to keep it airtight, right? You want to keep it airtight. And um, what we want, we want this in direct sunlight. Sun hits it, and it starts producing condensation. What I've put in there is loads of moss around the container because it's full of moisture anyway. And I uh, want to hit in the plastic bag, tap the plastic bag, hits the stone, and drops into our container. Obviously, we want this uh, running all the time, so I don't want to be pulling the lid off and getting back in. So if you can get like a straw or a tube or something like that, or if you're a soldier, you've got a camel pack, take the straw out of your camel pack put it into a container and you can just leave that and you can come over and suck it up. You're not going to get much water out of this, but if you can set a couple of these up, you're laughing.
Well, yeah. Right, I'll show you what we've made here. This is a filtration system. Uh, what we've found is a plastic bottle, put a couple of holes into the bottom. Loads of the bottom of the char hole because obviously it disinfects the water. We've got moss in there loaded with iodine which cleans the water. And we've used the cloth from our first field dressing to filter out all the big impurities. And what we'll do then, scoop up some water and we can just let that drip in. And it's going to drip slowly through all the sediments, uh, through all the layers and drop into our container. I'd still boil after that but that's going to take most of the crap out of your water. It's a simple method we've put together, if it's raining or whatever, we'll just put a bit of face field dressing around here. When it rains, it captures into this, and all it's just going to do is soak down and drip into the container. And that all is just a simple method of getting water. I'm going to show you one more. Just another method of collecting rainwater. We've made a bag, put a little stone at the bottom into our container. The rain's going to hit here, and all comes down into one and drop into your container and that is it, pretty simple. I'm just going to take it back to our solar still a minute, I want to show you the inside of it. Right, so our solar still, like I said, I want to be all airtight, but I'll show you the insides of it now. So, just loads of it moss and I've put a container in it. All the heat comes up, hits the plastic bag and drops into the container and that is it. And I hope you've got something out of Thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Right, all I'm going to show you now is how to navigate from the sun. The sun is roughly due south at 12 o'clock. So at the minute it's 11 o'clock in the morning. So I want to find, I want to find south without your compass. So what I'll do is sort of known as hand spanning. So all it is is one hand span. All I'm going to do is put my little finger on the sun. Where my thumb is, straight to the ground. That's roughly due south. Happy with that? Try it out. See you later. Cool, got that. Show you now if you're ever in an unlikely position where you're being captured, you, you went to the bank with your mum, and uh, next minute there's been some people in there trying to rob the bank and they put you as hostage. As you can see here, I've just been uh, took hostage by the bank, uh, by the robbers in the bank, and uh, I'm going to get out of these and then break free. So, as you can see, it's all about presentation. I've presented myself like so. Sometimes move my hands a bit, I've got a bit of space in here. What I'm going to use now is Fishing. <laughs> ah, done. Fucking in the house. I've been carrying a bit of grass in my pocket just to dry it all out and I've just been cutting around with it all day today and obviously I'm on the moors now practicing a bit of navigational training and a bit of survival training and obviously my fire lighting so I'm going to try now using a flint and steel and I've got a little bit of, little bit of cotton wool in here as well what I'm going to use obviously is my, uh, my wrist flint and steel here comms cord on let's see how good it is, bring it on here we go And all it is, just a bit of perseverance. And as you can see there, we've got fire. Hopefully you enjoyed Right, as you can see, starting to get a bit dark now I've got about 13 kilometers left to get to the end but I'm getting a bit tired and a bit hungry so uh, I'm gonna get a bit of uh, wild food down my neck so what I've just come across here as you can see a bit of thistle and uh, you can eat all this it's brilliant uh, you just want to get to the inside get away from the thorns and get it down yeah gives you a good bit of water and some good nutrients as well so bring it on so the first thing I want to do Let's take a segment off what I want to eat. And all you're doing, taking off all these fawns, I don't want to be chewing on them.
Well, now it's real. I'll just start chewing it. I'm getting, I'm getting it down your neck. I'll see you all later. Ta-da.